So let's talk about this required practical to do with plant tropisms. Now, if you remember back to a previous video, when we're talking about a, pro, uh, a tropism, we're talking about a uh, response to an environment, a, a movement to the environment. Let me give you some examples, just to, just to recap what was in one of the previous videos. This plant here, for example, that is showing positive photo tropism. So what do I mean by positive phototropism? Let's pick this apart. Positive meaning towards. Photo meaning light. And tropism is that movement response. So this plant is moving towards the light. It's trying to maximize the light it ga uh, gathers through photosynthesis and ensure the best chances of its own survival. These are the roots of a tree, and they're, they're showing some interesting tropisms going on here. Um, for example, they are showing uh, positive geotropism. What does that mean? Well, let's pick this apart. Positive, again, meaning towards. Geo, uh, meaning things to do with the earth and tropism, again, the idea of movement. So these roots are, are moving in the direction of the Earth, in the direction of gravity. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, does that mean that there's a negative geotropism? Is negative geotropism a thing? Do you get plants intentionally growing away from the direction of gravity? Yeah, and if you look at the back, you've got a tree there, that tree is growing up. The, the, the trunk of the tree, the shoot, it's all showing negative geotropism because it is all trying to move away from the direction of gravity. Uh, likewise, these roots, these roots are also showing, uh, so all these roots here, uh, they are showing um, negative phototropism. Well, what does that mean? Well, uh, it means that they are moving away from the light. Well, because if a root is up in the light, that means that it's not in the soil doing its job. So plants have negative phototropism in their roots to get their roots to turn down into the soil and start, um, start drawing nutrients and water from the ground. Anyway, so that's, that's your positive and negative tropisms there. So in this required practical, you are going to grow some plants and you are going to observe their responses to their environment. You're going to have a look at their tropisms. Now, the ones that you're probably going to use is going to be cress um, because cress, oops, cress grows very, very quickly and it's not, it's nice and cheap for schools to use as well. So what you'll do is you'll probably get, I'm going to draw some little cress seeds. There we go. I have five cress seeds just here. And we'll have five cress seeds just here and five cress seeds over the way like that. That's perfect. And you'll probably grow some in a, a light condition. So they will, they will, oh, what's that? That's a good word. Let's use that word. They will germinate. So they will, they will sprout, but germinate's really the proper word. They will germinate and they will grow and you'll leave them for a couple of days and they'll grow little leaves on the top. And then you can get your rulers and you can measure uh, their growth and then you can uh, you can calculate an average. So let's say that the the heights after a few days, we have 11 millimeters, uh, 20, 12 millimeters, 15 millimeters, nine millimeters and 13 millimeters. Let's say that those were our heights recorded and we wanted to work out a mean. How do we work out a mean? Well, uh, calculator so we do 11 millimeters plus 12 plus 15 so what I'm doing is I am uh, adding together all of the values plus 13 and then I'm going to divide by the number of values there are five values there divided by five hey it's come out as 12 exactly 12 millimeters that would be your your mean for this experiment um, you may also grow some in the dark um, and what you will find when you come back and see them is that they are surprisingly tall. Uh, that always surprises people because they come out as being rather on the tall side and they they kind of look quite yellow and they 
they actually look quite spindly as well. A couple of points to note here, why are they tall? Well, they are trying to, they are trying to reach the light. Reach the light. From the uh, germinating seeds perspective, the fact that there's no light around suggests that they are under the ground, which means they need to grow up nice and tall um, to try and break through the surface of the soil and start getting some sunlight. Remember, they are running off of whatever nutrients are stored in the seed, which then they don't last forever, so it's got to find light as quickly as it can. They're spindly because there is only, you know, there's only so much resource that you can pull from, from a seed. Well, why are they yellow? Well, it's because they can't do photosynthesis. They can't synthesize glucose for respiration. Um, well, they can't, and they can't, they can't, um, they can't produce their own chlorophyll. So, there's no new chlorophyll. So yeah, so they look, they look rather yellow and unhappy. Probably one of the other ones that you'll do then is you will probably maybe do one where you've got light coming from one side so that you can show some nice effects of positive phototropism. And they'll grow like this, pointing their leaves over towards the light, like so. Um, and sh yeah, so, so showing positive phototropism. Oh, of course, it goes without saying that in my original experiment over here, that the light would have to be, I don't know, something like that. Because I've drawn them all nice and straight, which means that they are, the sort of being, the light is evenly distributed, it's not from, from one side. So yeah, um, you can also do, maybe some schools have got clever things like, um, uh, these bits of equipment just here, where's it gone? Uh, a clinostat, like this. And maybe it will be that rather than looking at phototropism, you want to look at uh, geotropism. So you see this uh, plant just down here, this little plant. Well, if you leave it on its side like that, the, um, the shoot will grow up, showing negative geotropism, but its roots will grow down as expected, you see, because, well, can we remember, can we remember why these plants show positive, pho show phototropism and what causes uh, geotropism? Well, do you remember it's all to do with that family of hormones, the, the auxins, and they, uh, they help to uh, induce geotropism. If you've forgotten all about auxins, probably a good idea to go back and watch the video on plant hormones. So yeah, in this one that's been left alone, in this this plant over here, the group the uh, the roots will grow down, showing positive geotropism. Clinostats, on the other hand, they're quite fun because what they can do is they can rotate the plant round and round and round and round and round and round and round, so that the auxins never have a chance to accumulate anywhere and influence growth. What you get then is that the roots will just just grow off like that, they will, they will not show. They will not show geotropism because as they are being rotated, gravity is acting on all parts of them equally, which is quite fun. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a way of looking at geotropism. One, a plant that's left alone, the roots will grow down. One that you completely rotate um, will, will, uh, will show short, straight uh, root growth. Also, just as a sort of a, a final parting comment, the clinostat, you can also set it so it's pointing upwards so that the, um, so it's rotating round and round like that. And then what you can do is you can take your plants like so, these ones here, let's say, with the light coming from one side. And if it's being continually rotated round and round, even though you've got light coming from one side, because the little seedlings are being rotated and have light evenly distributed amongst all surfaces, they will still grow up nice and straight. They will not show that phototropism because like I say, the clinostat is ensuring that all sides are equally uh, illuminated. Anyway, cool stuff. Thanks.